There are people who claim to remember events that happened in a former lifetime. It is a strange phenomenon called reincarnation. There's the story of Maria, a little girl who lived a long time ago in a coastal village of France. Maria had a special touch with living things. It was said she could cure animals and people of illness. The villagers called her a witch and hunted her down in the night. A girl living now remembers every detail of that horrible night as though it had happened to her. Perhaps it did. Ruth McGuire is convinced she has lived before. She remembers a specific place where this other life began. The smallest details are clear in her mind, though she has never been there. Ruth McGuire remembers more than where her past life began. She remembers how it ended. series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. Men of vision are rare in any time. In the pioneering days of American industrial expansion, Henry Ford was such a man. In his later years, Ford would be acclaimed as the father of the assembly line. Ford's genius embraced another idea. He believed he was immortal. Ford thought that his essential being or soul would be reborn into another body. Reincarnation is a belief that has been expressed by every civilization known to man. The principles governing the cycles of birth, death, and rebirth are called karma. Karma means that a soul progresses from body to body, life to life, until it achieves perfect harmony with the universe. Thus, one who suffers in this life is assured of at least the possibility of a better break in the next. All right, now lie down and make yourself as comfortable as you can. Dr. Helen Wambach is a All clinical right, psychologist sure. doing reincarnation research in San Francisco. The job. Using the technique of hypnotic regression, she will be the guide on a remarkable journey through time and space. And all discomfort leaves your body, and you're floating on a cloud, and your body is very, very heavy now. We're going to float back all around the world, back into past time. When I call out the name of a place, let images come into your mind. An image for the Far East. An image for Central Asia. An image for Europe. An image for the Near East in Africa. Or an image for North, Central, or South America. Now, choose. You have chosen. I'd more or less pick Scandinavia. Um, I couldn't get out of the snow. The only real scenery was just rolling snow-covered hills, frozen ground. And it seemed like we traveled um, by foot most of the time from one fishing hole to another, it seemed. And um, my death was an accident in you know, one of the journeys, and it was like, um, had, it seemed to have something to do with a, um, a sled, and it sort of got thrown over, and I was just left laying in a snowbank. 
it seemed to be on the foot of the steps of a, a pyramid, a, a temple. The ceremony that uh, I was going to attend was attended by all the members of the village, all the surrounding villages. And it seemed to be um, a healing. There was some type of a healing going on on what seemed to have been maybe the chief of the village. And I remember I had this very strong belief that this was going to be helpful and very great interest. Dr. Wambach has regressed more than 2,000 persons in her search for scientifically valid data on the reincarnation experience. Well, actually, I've been searching for five years now for evidence that we may have lived before. What I found is what many researchers have found, that there's a tantalizing mix of fantasy and checkable reality in past life recall. My belief was that if we have lived past lives, all of us have lived past lives. And therefore, I ought to be able to explore this phenomenon in the same normative way that a psychologist would go about exploring any other kinds of phenomenon. So I evolved a technique of taking people to past lives that I found to be both safe and reliable, and where I could get repeatable evidence. Elbows down. Simply put, Dr. Wambach's technique is to plant a post-hypnotic suggestion in the subject's minds, which enables them to fill out an elaborate questionnaire after the session is over. The questionnaires are important because Dr. Wambach finds that during regression, patients are reluctant to have their journey to a past life disturbed by conversation with the hypnotist. However, Dr. Wambach will occasionally use the standard question and answer technique to explore an unusual case. All right, now, Bob, I want you to go to a time when you are listening to some of the people around you talk, and you will hear the syllables, and you will be able to repeat them. Nainu rakakane kum kum ta ta Nainu rakakane kum ta ta All right, that's fine, Bob. Can you tell me what these words mean? What is being talked about? In regard to the the days, labors, the dissatisfaction with the the task, the satisfaction with the job. How do you feel about this? Do you feel dissatisfied? I feel it's all in a day's all in a day's time, and I'll soon be on my way away from it. Now, Bob, I want you to move in that lifetime to a time when you are seeing something written. Do you see anything? You will be able to open your eyes without coming out of the hypnotic trance. You will focus intently on the hieroglyphs and you will be able to copy them. Dr. Wambach has had an expert at Stanford University study Bob's strange writing. She says the expert has been able to identify 80% of the characters as authentic Egyptian hieroglyphs. Very good, Bob. Can you tell me now what these hieroglyphs mean? In reference to a new trade route and treaty of free movement and protection from the highest power for such a venture. Hi, Bob. Oh. How was it? Not bad. Not bad, huh? <laughs> Bob is a retired stockbroker. Yeah. How could he write and converse in a language that vanished tens of centuries ago, along with the builders of the pyramids? At the very least, it's a fascinating exercise 
this probing of the unconscious mind for scraps of information about past lives. There are more practical aspects to the study of reincarnation. Trauma from a past life sometimes seems to spill over into the present. It is possible that many physical and emotional problems which defy medical science can be cured through an understanding of this principle. In this lifetime, for instance, I've had a, a series of, since early childhood, seizure type of things that occurred that doctors and priests couldn't explain that... Shirley would, Krepp eventually described uh, her problem to Dr. Wambach. The sensation of going a million miles an hour and weighing at least a ton. And it was pretty terrorizing to have that occurring because I couldn't make it stop. Uh, during the session where I was regressed to the lifetime as a girl named Maria, this uh, particular seizure started to occur while I was uh, under hypnosis. And it was then that Dr. Wambach um, took me to that point where it had first started to occur. Under hypnosis, Shirley described herself as a healer in a village on the coast of France. She said her name was Maria and that she'd been summoned to the constables to help his sick child. The child died. One evening, after the child had died, on my walk home through the forest, out of the bushes, out of the trees, with torches, the whole village seemed to appear and they were going to burn Maria as a witch because they thought she'd killed the boy. And they came towards her, they'd get the witch. And I ran as Maria. I didn't want to get caught and it was then that the sensation started. The sensation that I had been experiencing in this lifetime of absolute stark raving terror. And they chased me, screaming and yelling, and I ran and I ran. And rather than to be caught by them and burnt, I jumped off a cliff. And that was the feeling of weighing a million pounds. And as Maria dropped that body and came out of, of that body, the weight, the speeding sensation stopped completely and abruptly, unlike any of the seizures that I'd had. It could be coincidence that Shirley's symptoms disappeared after she confronted the nightmare of a prior life. Or it could be just what it appears, using an understanding and karma to calm the restless corner of Shirley's mind that is still Maria. Dr. Wambach's collection of 2,000 apparent reincarnation experiences has yielded some fascinating data. Between 70 and 80% of her subjects remember lives as working class people or peasants. If these prior lives were imaginary, wouldn't more people think of themselves as royalty rather than accurately reflecting a cross section of society? In another experiment, a group of white Californians was regressed to the 1850s. An extraordinary number said they were Asians then. Could they have been the Orientals who were imported to build California's railroads? Could they still be with us in new bodies? How many pasts can a person have? The work of other investigators may suggest an answer. The old Chestnut Inn in Kent, Connecticut has a history as rich as its setting. Ruth McGuire has quite a history of her own. It appears she may have a number of histories. I've had very strong feelings about the year 1857 and India. When I was just a child, I picked up a 10 cent piece. I felt terribly depressed. The date meant something to me. Ruth had heard of Professor Hans Holzer, parapsychologist and author. She invited him to probe her mind for a meaning to the date that bothered her. Using hypnotic regression, Professor Holzer had enjoyed success with similar cases before. Your name is Ruth McGuire. I want you to go back with me 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years.
Where do you live? In Manhattan. You are now ten years old. You are now nine years old. You are now seven years old. You are seven years old. You are seven years old. You are Ruth McGuire. You are seven years old. Where do you go to school? St. Nicholas of Tollentine. What is your favorite teacher's name? Sister Bonaventure. What does she teach you? Oh, poetry. She declaims poetry. You are seven years old. You are six years old. You are five years old. You are four years old. You are three years old. You are two years old. You are one year. You have just been born. I want you to go back, back, beyond the threshold of birth. You're minus five, minus ten, minus twenty. What do you see? Look around you. Where are you? It's all vapory. What do you see? Thick, thick clouds and vapors. Cold. Oh, yes. I know where I am now. Where are you? I'm in England. Where are you? What place? Sussex. Where did your father come from? Horton. It's in the North Riding area. And your mother? Durham. That's near Newcastle. Did you ever get to the New World? No, I died in Leiden at the age of 13. It was like a dam breaking. The body screaming, shouting, pillaging. I ran and hid. Next, Ruth recalls another life and a crisis in a distant land. I always dreaded being sent away. Where were you sent? We went to India. Where in India? Calcutta. And then another place where there was an uprising. The natives were very angry. They didn't, didn't want us there. And they came in in a body screaming, shouting, pillaging. Professor Holzer feels he can probe even deeper into Ruth's multiple past lives. Now I want you to go back further, further, beyond your life in India, beyond your life in England. Go back, go back, another, another incarnation, another life. And what town are we in? Now we are in Holland. The year is six. 13. Smoke in the room. What sort of smoke? The fire. It's smoking the fire. Where are you to begin with? Where are you now? Oh, I'm, I'm in a room in a cottage. And the fireplace is smoking. It burns my throat. My aunt and my mother are both there. And we have to wait and wait and wait. And there's something about the new world and passage. There was this large man, and he pinned me against the wall. I was miserable, and I fell overboard. For a moment, I struggled, and then a strange feeling of happiness came over me. I must have been on shipboard. I saw the coffin and the people passing by, and I wanted to tell them, I hear what you're saying. I hear, and I tried to move my arm. I tried, and it was like lead. I couldn't move, I couldn't wiggle, I couldn't even move my nose, I couldn't indicate 
that I was there and I was listening. I seemed to be moving on a ribbon towards a great light. What was the next sensation that followed? I, there were people. I saw shadows and presences and people, people I didn't know, but my mother. Yes, I, I saw my mother and there was a comforting feeling that I had found her at last. For Ruth McGuire, the session was a revelation. The controversial concept of karma made sense to her and seemed to explain so many things. Whatever she might have suffered in past lives only seemed now to increase her chance of serenity in this one. Dr. William Yaney is a psychiatrist who has devoted years to the study of reincarnation and the laws of karma. Where I sit, I really see life as really a schoolroom this, we're, we're living in a very, very narrow, narrow spectrum, a very narrow dimension, as, as our parapsychologists are beginning to describe to us, tell us. I really see what, we're, what we've got here is a soul utilizing an expendable body, so to speak, in a lifetime, a given span of time and space, to learn something. Dr. Yaney believes the vast and complex cycle of birth death and rebirth must be controlled by a higher order of intelligence. Someone must be minding the store, so to speak. Who or what that force is remains one of the great puzzles confronting mankind.